How's it going guys and welcome back to The Lair and today I have a, another special video here for you. Um, this is a remake or I should say a revamp of one of my previously very competitive decks before Ikoria came out. Um, blue and white flyers. So we have some new additions that I think is really going to help push this deck over the top. Uh, this deck is one of the more competitive decks. Um, I've changed very little. But anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the deck list. Call this deck Wings of Insight. Uh, on the one drop slot, I have four copies of Healer's Hawk, one Plains, one one Flying Lifelink. You know the deal. Four copies of Loyal Pegasus, also for one Plains, two one Flying. Loyal Pegasus can't attack or block alone. Four copies of Spectral Sailor, one Island, one one Flash Flying, and then we can pay three and one Island and uh, draw a card. And this is not a tap ability, so we can attack in or, or whatever and then activate this ability. Um, can also be activated the moment he comes into play. On to the two drops. Four copies of Cerulean Drake. One colorless, one island, one one, flying protection from red. And we can sacrifice Cerulean Drake and counter target spell that targets you. And of course, uh, on the best of one ladder, there's... A bunch of mono red so this just will shut down their whole entire day uh, it's fantastic it's a good feeling uh, now this is one of the new uh, additions from uh, Akoria sky cat sovereign for one plane one island one one flying sky cat sovereign gets a plus one plus one for each other creature you control with flying and then we can pay two a planes and an island and create a one one white cat bird creature token with flying uh, this card is such a ridiculous addition to this deck you're gonna see in the gameplay today. Uh, four copies of Rally of Wings for one colorless and one planes. Instant untap all creatures you control. Creatures you control with flying get plus two plus two until the end of turn. Three copies of Staggering Insight. One planes, one island. Enchant Creature. Enchanted Creature gets plus one plus one and has lifelink and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player we draw a card. Four copies of Angel of Vitality for two colorless and one planes. He's a 2-2 flying. If you, you would gain life, you gain that much life plus one. And then Angel of Vitality gets plus two plus two as long as you have 25 or more life. Uh, four copies of Imperium Eagle or one colorless, one planes, one island, 2-3 flying. Other creatures you control with flying get plus one plus one. And then this is the second edition uh, from Ikoria, Jub Jubilant Sky Bonder for one colorless and either any combination of two planes or two island, two two flying, and creatures you control with flying have spells your opponent casts that target this creature, costs two more to cast, uh, and that ability does stack. Um, so the basic idea is, is just swarming the board with flyers and uh, Sky Cat gets pumped by every additional creature you have with flying, and then Imperium Eagle on the board pluses all the other flyers, uh, and that can be stacked. And then with the addition of Jubilant Sky Bonder, because this ability stacks, it makes it very, very, very tough for uh, your opponents to board wipe and etc. And then we. I mean, we can just win the game straight up with just playing the creatures, but if we have a Rally of Wings with two or three creatures out, I mean, it's, it's lights out. Um, getting into the mana base, I'm running seven planes, six islands, four hollowed fountains, and four temple of enlightenments. Uh, the deck has an average converted mana cost of 2.0 with 32 creatures, and we're running 21 lands just to be safe. So let's, uh, let's hop into some games and see how we do. As always, please, if you enjoy the content, like and subscribe. It's free and it helps the channel out so much. Uh, try and put out uh, different content daily, um, all, all types of stuff. Best of one, best of three, drafts, um, card discussion. But uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. Also, if you have any comments, if I do a misplay, or if you have maybe a suggestion to add to the deck or change to any of the decks that I'm working with, please feel free to shout out. Uh, hoo -hoo. First opponent, Huffmaster, and he has companion Garuda, Doom of Depths. I haven't actually played against this companion yet, so 
I'm curious to see how this works out. Uh, so our opening hand, we have a three lander. We've got Rally of Wings, Sky Cat. Looks good to me. Keep it. I'm gonna lead off here with the island. I'm gonna make, make the opponent think maybe we're playing like a control deck. Uh, it appears the opponent's playing a control deck himself, so that might not work, but I always like to lead off with a more intimidating color if I don't have a, a play on the first, on the first uh, turn. So I'm gonna lead off with the island. Sultai. Another Rally of Wings. Um, do I lead off with the Sky Sky Cat? I think I do. Pump shocking in here. I have a removal spell. Insight, that's nice. I'm gonna play out the Cerulean Drake. There's another Zagoth Triome. Normally I would uh, save the Rally of Wings till we have a, a bigger board presence, but um, the opponent could have board wipes. He could have that new black card, what is it, uh, something like Extinction, Extinction event I think it is. Um, so I, I see myself using this Rally of Wings, unless he just kills something right now. He's one off from... I'm sorry, two off from his companion. Um, I think here I play the Imperium Eagle. from among them onto the battlefield. So at this point you can steal my Sky Cat. Legion's in. Okay. So this is, seems to be like Soul Tie control. I heard this uh, this companion is uh, putting in big waves. Yep. He's going to uh, going to town here. So I guess it's control the board and then resurrect with Garuda. Uh, yeah, well, not much we can do here. And looks like he's about to play his companion. Opponent has no creatures of his own, so I guess he's going to be resurrecting my Sky Cat. And another fucking land. It's really weird to draw so much land and so many other pump spells and not any creatures. Oh, there's a creature. At this point, I mean, I'm just trying to get whatever removal he has out of his hand. This is a horrible card to draw at this moment. So opponent's still ramping. Does he find his... Yeah, there it is. All right, so opponent's going to be playing his Garuda next turn. Uh, and I guess he's going to be taking my Sky Cat. Okay. We need to find another creature. Fuck yeah! 
appreciate you, Deb Denton. Thanks for the subscription. Unfortunately, I think this game is is over. Example of what this deck can do, but uh, that's just how it goes. So let's hop into another one, see how we do. I haven't picked up a, a Garuda yet um, from any of my packs, and I'm conserving my wild cards till the middle. Uh, the meta settles a little bit more. Uh, so we got a three lander here, We've got a nice spread. So this is what a normal hand will look like in this deck. Um, depending on, okay, I'm gonna shock in and I'm gonna play the healer's hawk. Oh, red, okay, that's interesting. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna wait to play Loyal. Pick up another land, we definitely don't need that. I go ahead and in here and smack. Maybe. So, usually I have our Loyal Pegasus. Drop Sky Bond? No, I think I want to wait. I'm going to play the Loyal and the Sky Bond. And we'll save Jubilant for after. Now, the opponent's going to immediately target the Sky Cat, so we're still attacking in for four here. Then I play my uh, Jubilant Sky Bonder. Uh, this is a slot that I is kind of flexible to me. The other one, okay, so do I play Angel? Yeah, I'm gonna play the Angel and we'll save our other Sky Cat because I don't think this one's gonna be less. Quench, okay, no worries. Um, we're still coming in, man. Still coming in. That Jubilant Skybonder. Put in some serious work. What you got, man? So his shock becomes. And as you can see, if we draw an Imperium Eagle, if we draw a Rally of Wings, um, the the deck is good. It's, it's good, it's very aggressive, it's very fast. And here, just... And while the opponent's wasting all of his spells, we're still just smacking him in the face. Yeah, it's not gonna be good enough. I mean, <clears throat> I don't 
see what the well he could do. Crack on the right doesn't do. This this shit down here. Gonna go over here. And just and just keep beating his face in. Good game, sir. GPA ninety nine. So that was more like how the deck should be performing. Um, it's just so good. It's just so good. I um I, I really do believe that this could possibly be a. a a mythic brink deck to get you there. Um, I just like I like variety. I like switching it up. I like having fun. I mean, winning winning's fun, but I, I I don't know. The deck is this deck is very close to me. It ranks right up there with mono red as far as like it's easy to play. You just keep playing creatures and just overwhelming your opponent. Um, it, you know, so, I don't know. But I, I wanted to share it with you because it is that good. All right, so pick up nothing new for our regulars. Let's see what we got. Pick up a Rogarin Triome. Hey, I mean, you know, they say that when a new set comes out, the first thing that you should spend your wilds on is the uh, the rare lands. And I, <laughs> I want to try and avoid that if possible. Um, I'm trying something new this season with the, uh, the release of Ikoria. I'm going to try drafting more um, before I... Normally, I would, I would get the Mastery, and then I would usually pre-order... Um, but since I don't have a job right now, I, I don't have that money available. So I'm, I really have to conserve my coins and my gems. So uh, this particular uh, strategy might be very um, intriguing to a lot of free-to-play, or free-to-players, I should say. Um, so what I've been told is, is that the best thing that you can do with your, your coins, especially when a new set comes out, is spend that on drafting. Uh, so I'm going to attempt that. Um, I'll be doing a draft tomorrow, um, and you will see that in the next day or so. I, I already did one draft, and <laughs> I got completely annihilated. I did get an ultimatum off, though, on a four-color <laughs> draft deck. Uh, I was just being greedy, and I was kind of, kind of just trying to snag a couple really good rares and mythics that I saw. But, uh, it, you know, it, it was fun. So this time I'm, I'm going in a little bit more focused and uh, I'm not going to be quite as greedy. I'll probably stick to two or three colors. But anyways, I'm, I'm kind of carrying on here. Let's get back into uh, some game gameplay. Opening hand, I've got a three lander. I've got this looks absolutely beautiful. He actually drew the Imperium Eagle this time. Showcase that. I'm gonna play the Hall of Fountain in tap since we don't have a, a one drop to play. Oh, excuse me. I'm playing the Uzalith. I've seen some nasty, nasty, nasty combos with this so far. Um, very excited about working this into a future deck. Um, here I think obviously Cerulean Drake. At this point obviously he's probably not going to be playing red cards. Um, so any type of removal I can get out of his, his hand is good before I play my good cards. Um, perfect. The cool thing about this deck is it has so many useless like non-threatening creatures that usually when you're playing a, 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 a control deck or uh, any type of mid-range deck, they usually, unless they're a, a wiser player, don't spend their early plays or their early uh, defensive cards. So here, I Royal Pegasus. Assuming he's going to block the Royal Pegasus, yep. Mm. 
See, every every day I play a uh, you know a different type of deck, and you realize just how good. I was like, when when this card came out, I was like, how good, how, how good is this card really? But, I mean, damn. You don't even think of the applications. You know, you got you play Hydroid Traces for twelve, and then you know it dies. And you keep the counters, and then game combat on your, and then you can replace them. Unbelievable. Well, I think the opponent messed up there. Um, what do I do here? So, I do... I don't want to commit too much to the board right now because the opponent could very easily have some type of a board wipe. So, I think I just... We definitely want to kill Vivian. So, here... Here, and we'll put this back there. Okay, we'll save up our Spectral Sailor uh, to flash in on the end of our opponent's turn. Oh, I didn't realize he has reach. Hmm. So that was a big misplay on my on my part. Is our greatest strength. We might be in trouble here. Um, so well, this is interesting. This is definitely this definitely shuts down this type of deck because our deck we don't we just rely on pure aggressiveness. Yeah, I think, I think this one's over. Good game. Well, that was a learning experience. That's the first time I've seen the new Vivian in action. Definitely shuts this this deck down. I definitely want to make a, a best of three version of this deck with a sideboard because I think this deck, it, like I said, is probably one of, still one of the best decks, especially with these new uh, additions. But um, I, I think I'll. Uh, we rework this and then make a best of three deck with the uh, sideboard next week. Put it Fillmore Tauros. 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 Alright, so got a three lander here. I've got a nice, beautiful spread into Jubilant Skybonder and Imperium Eagle. We're going to keep this. The opponent is, uh, there we go. Um, yeah, I think I, I think I still lead off with Healer's Hawk here. The thing is, if you play Loyal Pegasus, yes, you, you played something, but then when you go in and, and attack, I'm sorry, when you, when you play your second drop or your second creature, so here we just... I'm just gonna hollowed fountain, oil pegasus. I'm assuming this is Dimir Flash. Okay. 
I don't think I do anything here. I'm gonna wait till my opponent taps out, if he taps out. Crack it. Cool. Um, so I think the move here is Jubilant Skybomber and Spectral Sailor. And just keep smashing the base. So see now, if the opponent draws a, a fourth land here, he, uh, he, he can't board wipe us because it makes it two more to cast. And this card, I've, I've been in several matches where I have two or three of these Jubilant Skybonders and it just completely shuts it down. So now he has to pick. He has to pick which one. Yeah, see. It was eyeballing my creatures. Now watch this. So I play Imperium Eagle here. I pump all my creatures. Then I rally of wings and... This is retarded. The, the explosive damage that this deck can do... You, if, you have a, if you have a nice curve and you, and you curve out, turn one, two, three, and then drop either an Imperium Eagle or you can pull a Rally of Wings or like what I just did where you have both. I mean, you're doing... On turn four, you're doing 25 damage and you've already done, what, 15, 10... 10 to 15 up until that point on turn four. So basically, what is that? Turn four, you're doing almost 35 to 40 damage. It's just, it's just really hard to fuck with, especially in best of one. That's why I'm kind of hesitant. I know this deck can be competitive in best of three, but I haven't even seen this card. Okay, cool. So, I hope you guys are uh, enjoying the video, uh, and like I always say, please like and subscribe. Uh, it's free and it helps the channel out so much. Um, and of course, if you have any comments on misplays or maybe additions to the deck, please feel free to comment below. I always like to read all my comments and uh, respond as soon as possible. Um, Alright, so we have two lander here, I've got some scry and it's beautiful. Now, since I do not know what color my opponent's on, I will actually... Is that the right move? Yeah, I'm going to play, play out the island, see what uh, color my opponent's on, and then I can flash in the sp uh, spectrum. Look at this. So perfect. I'm going to flash in the spectrum. Look at the rally of wings. Scry. Yes, we need one more land at least. Well, I don't think this card will ever do anything to us because we're going to be running out of cards probably just as fast as he is. So, what's the play here? This is gonna completely shut his shit down if he's if he's mono red. Um, so yeah, I think Cerulean Drake, Healer's Hawk. He's eyeballing it. I love this matchup because if I'm playing mono red. And I put a uh, Staggering Insight on this card. I mean, I can block anything. None of his cards affect me. None of his cards can damage me. And I just keep drawing and gaining life. Yep. Protection from red, my man. They, this is, they usually pick off the Healer's Hawk, which is fine. So see, I can block, actually, do I block the robber? I think I do, because if I block the, the, the footlight thing, he just kills my Spectral Sailor. Nice, yeah, yeah, that is nice. Um, so yeah, here I just 
angel of vitality. I just go in with the spectral sailor. Next turn we can sky a sky cat sovereign into a rally of wings. Oh shit. Opponent played a blast zone, that that might fuck us up. That might fuck us up. Okay. So I block here. And let's just get this guy off the board. He can choose to either kill my angel or Mercury. Wow. I guess, right? Alright, so I'm gonna sky cat. Okay. The opponent's in a predicament here. He has to. It's two, four, seven. Now. Good game. Alright. I hate the, the mono red assholes that prematurely say good game. Can't stand that one bit. Alright. Anyways, what I was saying earlier about uh, Angel of Vitality, that's a slot that I feel like is very flexible. Um, I'm also eyeballing the. Um, drop it's like two colorless one island the elemental where it's like a two one when it enters the battlefield you draw a card so I could easily see myself replacing that because I don't feel like we have a like a hardcore life game shell in this deck all right so we got a two lander here I've got the usual suspects um I'd like to see a a couple other cheaper flyers, but I mean all the decks cheap, so we're just gonna go ahead and keep this anyways. Opponent's on green, so I have no problem playing out this healer's hop. Next turn will be a loyal Pegasus. So on this turn I'm gonna play the temple because it comes into play tapped. We pick up a fourth land, possibly. Um Do I want this land? I don't think I want this land. And we play out Royal Pegasus. Uh, next turn, I believe, we'll be playing Jubilant Skywander. He just quits the game. Three lander here, Loyal Pegasus, Sky Cat, beautiful. Keep it. Here I shock in Loyal. Playing uh, Demir, possibly Demir Flash. Excuse me. Which is the oh. I takes my staggering, that's fine. 
He also has an evolving wilds, which will slow him down. At this point, um, the opponent knows I have the sky hat. Is this Grixie's? I wonder. Sultai. Sultai. Sultai's coming back, man. I love it. I love it. Um, what's the move here? I don't really want to lose more life, so he already knows I have Sky Cat. I feel like I have a better chance if I leave Sky Cat in my hand. I mean, I could have. I could do that. I'll let him take it. I have plenty of others, and we'll drop our Angel of Vitality. Pick up another Loyal Pegasus. Could see a board wipe here. Or, I'm trying to think of the new one that's for black. It's like something with extinction event. Opponent's still single targeting our creatures. It's cool. Um, so I'm gonna play this tapped. I'm gonna play a Pegasus. I'm gonna play a Sky Tap. We're taking a risk here, but if if the opponent couldn't see my hand or didn't see my cards before, I would uh, maybe not play my entire hand out, but. So he's playing a Hydroid Crisis for one. Alright. So I'm gonna just activate this because I have nothing else to do. And I just go in. I'm just gonna go in with the Sky Cat. Five damage is five damage. Now he will definitely be eyeballing the Sky Cat if he does not. And I think this token is absolutely ridiculous, right? I mean, I, I, I hate cats, but it's so cute, right? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and play this. I gotta make a move here. So we're gonna go in with everything. And we win, just like that. Yeah, I, I mean, this deck is just easy street for the most part. I mean, you know, you get your draws. And that's why sometimes I think about it and I'm like, man, I'm, I'm playing these matches and best of one. And, and the thing you have to remember is, is that you can always get Magic the Gathering and, and you know, you have 35 creatures in the deck and you go eight turns without drawing a creature. You know, it happens, but so let's get into another match here. got two islands that's not gonna cut it for the amount of lands that I run in this deck so we, we will be mulligan opponents Otto Dodo -ta. that's weird much well not much better but we'll we'll drop an angel we don't need three okay so we'll keep this we will drop an angel and I will start off with the hollowed fountain because we don't have a one drop unless we go into one okay so the mother green stompy we pick up a staggering insight that's nice I'm gonna lead off with the hollowed fountain tapped A lot of tasty uh, additions to the meat. 
that's like something, something Quartzwood Stomper or something. Um, unfortunately, we still don't have anything we can play, but we can hit control, full control, and make them think that we have counter spells. Chipping on human infantry control. So here I play Angel. Um, it's just business as usual. It's fine. No more getting pushed around. That could be useful. Play out the angel here. With an edge walk in here. I bow to no one. I'm gonna hold up. I'm gonna hold up the blocks. Plays another pelt collector. Okay, it doesn't have. Oh, it does have haste. Haha. Uh -huh. Just kidding. Yeah, I think we're still dead here. So we might be able to turn this around. I'm gonna play the Dueling Skybounder, and then I'm gonna put Stacking Insight on the Angel. So now opponent stacking in for three, six, seven. If we can survive one more round, I think we can. Uh, I think we can turn it around. But lots of options for our opponent. He could have removal. He could have uh, just a creature that he can flash in. Or, I'm sorry, uh, hasted. Opponent passes again. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I think our uh, jubilant skybonder is saving us. So we're just gonna. Hopefully we can uh, just keep playing some special sales, that's nice. And just like that, in one turn, we turn it around. I don't think the opponent's coming back from this. We've uh, gotten ourselves out of yeah, it's not good enough. Okay. 
Starting off, I have a three lander, a healer's hawk, two rally of wings, and a staggering insight. Um, I'd have loved to see a uh, scry land here. But I mean, I guess we can't turn this down. Okay. I'm hesitant to play the, the Healer's Hawk on turn one. So I think what I'll do is I think I'll... Do I? Ah, fuck it. I'm gonna start off with the Healer's Hawk. Our uh, next turn will be the Royal Pegasus. Oh, a big passage. Um, so I'll, here, I'm gonna play the Hollow the Fountain. Attacked. Attack. Takes it. Play the, uh, the Royal Pegasus. Home on Grixies. I haven't seen very many Grixies since the uh, new set dropped. So this will be interesting. Okay, so opponent doesn't get much value out of that. However, he does see her hand. Um, so yeah, I guess once again I don't, wouldn't normally do this, but. Could have a board wipe here, a ritual soot, or extinction event. However, the, Cer the Cer Cerulean Drake would be saved. Um, that specific. Okay, he doesn't have that. The fires of invention. Now we can see anything. So. so I think I play the Royal Pegasus. Into a staggering insight on the soul and trade. Let the smack. We'll draw a creature. Okay. Uh, Skybonder's nice. Drawn from dreams. Okay, that's scary. Do something, man. Uh, this deck being Grixies, I feel like he could easily destroy the Cerulean Drake. We got lucky that he storms Wrath. But this Jubilant Sky... Oh, there it is. Extinction Event. So, even. That's a little bit of Jubilant Sky Roger. For eternal servitude. Mm. Uh, you can have this blue land. I outsmarted you eons ago. Good game. Not really. Can't be lucky, right?
Alright, I got time for one more today. Put it Momar with the Chandra. Three-lander here and much potential. Opponent uh, is playing mono red, so I will wait. I'm gonna drop a temple. We now have four lands, which is more than enough for this deck. So any other land, okay? We're gonna keep that on top. I was going to say any other land that we would potentially draw we'll definitely be putting to the bottom. I don't think our flyers are going to do too much good. So let's get rid of some cards. So here I do spectral. Opponent's gonna be in a bind here. I am assuming he's gonna take out the healer's hawk, being a red deck, but who knows? Uh, if he does take out the spectral sailor, that's good for us. I will play angel vitality. Or do I play stack okay, so we start in the healer's hawk, that's good. If he uses another burn spell, that's more than fine with me. This is where we kind of take advantage in the end. Um, please stop taking my cards. Uh, he has no flyers and he can't activate the, uh, the ability, so all he's doing is putting a 1-1 one -one on the board, which I don't mind pumping and then taking him out. So, he wants to waste. So, opponent knows what's going on here. Decides not to play it. So, here I play... I'm just gonna play the Stagnant Insight here. Smack the face. Start coming back eventually. Put another island, that's nice. Once again, this deck doesn't have any removal. Um, we're just a, a purely aggressive deck. I mean, at this point, no, I don't care about that. Curious to see what he chooses here. I'd love to see a rally of wings. That's nice. Um, so we're gonna play the island. Put the sky catch. No attacks here. Um, see if the opponent was holding up some type of a removal. If he does, I'm going to be uh, coming in pretty hard with the Sky Cat. Doesn't appear that he does. Um, don't mind. Don't mind uh, uh, killing this uh, robber of the rich. So he won't be coming in anymore, and I don't think he will either. So here, three. Play out the temple. Skybinder is fantastic. Um, I think here. I think here I just activate this. Let's go in with the uh, the Sky Cat, and we can chump block any of his other creatures. I'm gonna block. 
it's my card anyways. I really just, I don't like the, the card you steal from your deck. I think it's kind of obnoxious. Especially when you're in a mono red shell. I mean, like, get the fuck out of here. It's already one of the more competitive decks in X. some life. Cool. Let's do it. Uh, so here I block you and I block Is this one? Attacks. Attacks. Okay, so I'm gonna block you and I'm At this point, I'm going to save this Spectral Sailor for Chump Block. I'm definitely going in with you and you. Rest. Cool. We'd love to see a Rally of Wings here. All we have to do at this point is survive. The opponent hasn't uh, played any re extra removal. So... I think we're okay here. And then... If the opponent wants to, to to use a shock, for instance, it'll cost him three, and then he's going to waste his entire turn, and he doesn't have enough damage on board to kill me, because I'm coming in next turn. Still decides to go in. This is very interesting. Yeah. Think about that, man. I'm coming in. Opponent. This Jubilant Skybonder. Puts in so much work in this deck. Yeah, coming in. Uh, he's attacking for two, so I don't even really even need to block. He doesn't get any of the added benefit. You play a Sky Cat, you're still dead. So. So, I'm gonna shock in here. I'm gonna play this. With the added life gain of this, plus the card draw, he has to block this because this is threatening lethal. He can't shock or do anything else because of Jubilant Skybonder. Yep. Yeah, he's fucking that all up. You have to block him, man. I mean, opponent could have Ember Cleave. We do have protection from red, so. So I guess I will be blocking the biggest threat and the second biggest threat. It's not enough. And yeah, if the opponent didn't have Ember Cleave there, that's it.
and good game. Well, uh, that's the end of my video for today. I hope you uh, enjoyed. And if you did, please like and subscribe. It's free and it helps the channel out so much. There you go. And I will.